Hello everyone, today I'm going to add lights and a webcam to my Voron 2.4. I purchased this Microsoft LifeCam Studio during the pandemic. It was one of the only cameras I could get. It turns out it's actually a really good camera. Um, it does record in 1080 and uh, it seems to handle light and everything else really well. It comes with this base um, that uh, I took off. Um, there's just three really small screws that you have to unscrew and then this base comes off and um, I 3D printed uh, a new one and uh, I um, designed it so the cover of the bottom of the camera of the webcam from the mount that came with it and the three screws fit in to attach this camera to this mount. I've also added this channel here for the cable coming out of it and then I've also um, added uh, a series of holes here um, so you can use tie wrap to tie that cable down and I've designed this to mount underneath an excursion rail and uh, this way you can adjust the camera point it down and have a look at your image as you're 3d printing I plan on mounting this at the top of the printer but I'm gonna be mounting this on the left hand side and here you can see how I intend to hang it and I'll have the cable heading toward the back and then out through um, the filter vent at the top. And here I'm adding the ties, um, just simply feeding them through the hole, over, down, and then I'll tighten these. And here I'm adding the second one, uh, just to make sure the cable stays nice and tight. And then just cut these ends off. Get them out of your way. And uh, that's it. It holds the cable actually really quite nice. So I mounted it with two M3 T-nuts and then two M3 by eight hex bolts as well. And uh, here I am just tightening them down, adjusting the camera. Uh, you may find you have to adjust the screw that basically acts as, as the pivot point or the axle. So you can adjust the camera, tighten it, and make sure it stays in place. Since I'm not next to my computer, I'm using my tablet here. Um, I've just connected to the interface of Fluid. And here I can adjust the camera to make sure it's centered correctly. Um, I'll flip the image around later. To hide the cable, um, I'm going to use uh, some quarter inch flexible tubing. That way I can shove the cable inside the extrusion and then force this in right behind it. Um, which will hold the cable in really quite nicely. And I'll use several of these to hide the cable, but here you can see it holding um, part of that cable in. I'm going to run this cable around the corner. Uh, it is thick, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in a few minutes. First, um, I'm going to start running the wires for the lighting. So here I've got some strip lighting, um, actually cob lighting, and here I've got a 3D printed mount, um, well, that I 3D printed. And as you can see, the strip lighting, um, which is adhesive backed, uh, will fit right in here and glue itself right in. Um, in addition, I've got these uh, mounts that I found online, and they've got the little mount that you can attach um, with a T-nut, and then we've got this clip that slides right on. And um, the little strip that holds uh, the adhesive strip of LED lights fits in here. And what's nice about these is there's actually um, three positions and it snaps right in there like that. And it'll mount like this on the inside edge at the top of the printer. And um, these should work out real nice. So I found these wire guides on Thingiverse. Um, they're really quite nicely done. Um, they simply um, bolt in with T-nuts 
against the extrusion and they've got a hole. However, I want to run my camera cable through these and these aren't big enough, so I'm going to modify them. And to the right here you can see the modified ones. Um, I've placed a link to the STL. Instead of the closed um, top, I've opened it up. Um, the opening is wider, so I should be able to fit two LED wires and also the webcam cable as well. And the advantage of this is I can actually uh, unscrew this, make changes to the wires, and rescrew it um, anytime I choose because the top is open. Here you can see the LED power cables um, running underneath the top rail um, within the slot. And um, it goes into the corner and then it goes straight down. And I've got some clips. I tried 3D printing. I'm going to end up using the vinyl tubing. It works better. And here with the cable around the corner, um, you can see where the cable guide um, will actually go in and how it mounts against the railing, although the one I'm going to use is going to have the holes in the top. Here you can see the power cable that went down the side rail, along the base rail, and then um, down into the hole into the control uh, compartment underneath the printer where it's attached to the board. Here I've got the T-nuts installed um, and I'm going to use these to mount the LED uh, mounts that the holders attach to. <laughs> and here I'm simply using, um, I believe uh, this was an M3 by six screw and you just tighten it in, in this way. Then the actual mount uh, just slides right in. It clips in really nicely actually. And here you can see how the light bar slips in. Um, it actually clips in quite firmly. And here I'm adding the second mount for the second clip. I'm going to use two clips per light bar. Um, according to the person that created these, you should usually you should actually be using three. One should be in the center. I'm going to go with this for now. It seems like it's going to work. If not, I'll end up 3D printing another set. I'm actually out of both screws and T-nuts, and so until those come in, this is what I'm going to work with. So I cut the strip lighting at the proper length to fit inside uh, the plastic 3D printed bar. Also, one end is actually terminated with wires, but it has a connector. I simply cut the connector off and then um, I stripped the wire, the power wires that I'm running through. And here I'm testing them to make sure they work. And as you can see, they turn on. I'll show you a little later where you make this change in the settings for fluid. Before I permanently attach uh, these wires by soldering, um, I actually um, put some heat shrink tubing here to um, to isolate these to make sure one, they don't touch their DC, it'd be a big problem. Um, and I'm using multiple sizes here, which you'll see I'm gonna try and take advantage of. Um, but for right now, these are the thinnest to make sure these two um, don't bridge in any way. And I'll use my trusty little heat gun to get this done. So here I've taped down um, with some painter's tape uh, the other end of the LED strip. I've got to prepare this for soldering. And so just the tip of the soldering iron with a touch of solder to get uh, a little glob of solder there on the contacts. And here I've got some wire that I pre-tinned. Make sure you get the polarity right. They are marked as 24 volt uh, plus and minus here. And it doesn't take much. This goes pretty quick and easy. And I'm going ahead to do the negative lead as well. Um, I'm trying to solder these both on first um, before I take um, the adhesive backing and stick it to the uh, 3D printed holder that's gonna hold the strip into the mount. Um, 
otherwise it's going to be really hard to do or it'll melt the plastic. Once I'm done with all the soldering, just testing the LED light once again to make sure it still works and I didn't break or burn anything. Now we uh, peel off the backing and insert the LED strip onto the LED strip mount. And uh, make sure you center it well before you force this down. And notice the strip doesn't go all the way to the end. Um, it's a little bit longer and I'm going to be covering those parts and protecting them with some heat shrink tubing. Here I'm putting on some really thick heat shrink tubing. Um, I want it on the other end, even though it's permanently connected. Um, I think it'll provide an additional level of uh, protection and make sure if it gets really warm in here and if the glue gets soft, that the LED strip doesn't um, pull off. And again, use the heat gun. So here I've got an additional piece of heat shrink tubing that I put on the wires beforehand. And this covers the end of the really big um, heat shrink tubing that I shrunk. And so to try and make this one seamless, um, concentric <laughs> covering for the wires. And here you can see this a little bit closer. Um, it's not perfect or beautiful, but it works. It actually looks reasonably nicely finished. In the future ones, I'll make sure the, um, the writing on the heat shrink tubing is on the front. Here the mount is uh, clipped in. Um, I've got maybe a little bit too much um, pull here on the wire. I'll loosen that up in a minute. But you can see how I feed the wire through the bottom in the groove of the extrusion. And here I'm going to be using my cable guide uh, to bolt it in and make sure this doesn't get tangled in the belt. And again, you can see how this goes in and um, this should work just nicely. Here I've got the cable guide end. I've um, cut the wires, stripped them, and I'm going to be tinning, trimming these a little bit shorter, and then connecting them to the LED strip. Again, I'm using these um, two pieces of wood um, as sort of a work area, and they help me uh, hold the wires. Be careful. So I've tinned the wires, um, and here I've got the LED strip again, and I'm going to tin these again as well. Um, there is a little copper tab on each of these um, wherever you place the cut um, or at least at the line where you cut these because you do cut these per size and maybe this will give you a little better view than I did last time. So here I've already soldered a positive lead. I'm going to solder the negative lead. And by the way, before you do this soldering, if you're going to be using heat shrink tubing, make sure you've got the heat shrink tubing on the wire that you're going to use because um, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to get on after this. You'll have to desolder. So here I've soldered both ends and I've placed the heat shrink tubing on both ends and I've added it onto the tray. And then we insert it into the clips again, just like before. And the second side is complete. And we're going to just keep on doing this for the third side. And then we'll actually do the fourth side, except we only have to solder the wires on one end. So on the third side, in addition to the heat shrink tubing, um, please rewind this just a couple of seconds and take a look at the two um, clear 
um, vinyl um, quarter inch tubing that I've also inserted. I'm actually using two of these on each side of the corner and those allow me um, to feed the cables through but also work as a really effective cable guide that fits inside the slot in the railing. Um, I forgot to record um, actually placing these on but you simply slide them on and that's the only reason for showing you this piece of video here. Um, uh, this is actually, uh, I'm sorry, the back side um, of the LED light that I'm putting together here, um, which will be the final side. On the dead end string of these lights, all the way in the back for the LED light strips, uh, we won't be attaching wires here, but I still wanted to put some heat shrink tubing and I just cut it to size and I fit it flush with the edge. Then all that's left is inserting the last strip um, in the mount, testing the lighting, make sure it still works. And again, I'll show you where to make that change. Here's a close up of the wiring so you can see how it fits inside the extrusion. And you can see the quarter inch tubing that I used as a guide as well, in addition to the 3D printed guide to help keep the cabling all tucked up underneath and about as hidden as I possibly can. So how do we wire these lights in, these LED strips? Um, they connect to the spider controller board. Um, if you take a look here at the Voron documentation at the wiring of the board, um, here on the left-hand side where the major terminals are, you'll see there's an option. And if you scroll up, you can take a look here and see it's actually E1 out. And that is where you will connect the negative and positive wiring. And then I'm using Fluid, so if you go into the web interface using your web browser and if you click on the printer.cfg and hit edit, um, the page will come up. You'll need to scroll down a little bit. Um, there is a section where all the fans are listed and I actually added a section in there where the fans are for the LED lighting. And here I'm just scrolling down to the section. And here you can see I added a comment called LED control and it's output underscore pin. I gave it the name case light. Um, it's um, PC8 um, as per the documentation and the Voron documentation. And I put, um, uh, uh, <laughs> I, this is it. This is all you need to set. Set this to true, shut down value and cycle time. And once you've made these changes, um, you can hit um, save and restart. Um, but um, in this case, I'm just going to hit exit because I've already made these changes. And I'm leaving this up here just a little bit too long so you get a chance to look at it in detail. So once you hit save, it'll restart. If you go back to the main page, the home page, where you actually um, are able to control the printer. Um, if you take a look, um, take a look at the fans and um, outputs section here and notice what appears here, which wasn't there before, exactly what we named it in the file. And you can adjust the slider here um, to change the brightness um, as you wish, all the way up to one, which is full brightness. And um, if you want to, you can hit the circular arrow to reset it to zero or simply slide the slider back to zero. So there was a little more work than I bargained for, uh, but the end result I'm really happy with. Um, here's the printer all lit up. <laughs> I've got it extra bright. You could certainly um, tone it down um, with the... Uh, the little slider that's um, in the fluid display. Um, this probably works almost exactly the same in mainsail and I'm interested in it. So I'm probably gonna give it a shot sometime soon. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, if you found this video useful, please click subscribe and uh, thank you.